out of control. What, what do you think the end is? Uh, what, what is the end game here? Well, we're in, we're, we are, make no mistake, uh, well, you are, I'm out, because I sold, like, but you guys are in, the middle of an enormous uh, multivariate kind of Ponzi scheme. And so let me explain that to you, because it's important for you to understand. You get courted by investors, okay? These are not people writing checks out of their own balance sheet. They're doing a job with other people's money. And for that, they get one thing that's obvious, which is a yearly fee. And then something that's non-obvious, which is a part of the gains if what you do works. Okay, right, everybody understands that? That's how a fund that invests in you works. That fund is getting paid fees every year and then carry at the back end if it works, okay? They come to you. They're like, we want to partner with you. You're the best. We're going to help. You're so awesome. Have a fleece vest. <laughs> it has our logo on it. You know, we backed blah, blah, blah company. You know, right? That's sure. the whole, that's the basic, that's the pitch. Um, so you say yes. And then they give you, I'm just going to make up a number, a million bucks. And you go to your first board meeting. How fast are you growing? How many of you have had these discussions? How fast are you growing? Okay, grow faster. How many of you have had that discussion? Grow faster. Okay, most of you that, have, that raised your hand. Well, it would, it would probably shock you to know that almost 40 cents of every venture dollar right now goes right back into the hands of Google, Facebook, and Amazon. What do you think is happening there? Do you think that's all profitable growth? No. That's there to fund your superficial growth. Just because the entrepreneur or the VC gives you a million dollars and tells you to grow faster, do you have better product market fit in that moment? No. You're doing what you're told to do, which is to take their money and make the company grow, superficially grow. Then what do they do? They turn around to their buddies and say, look at this thing, it's growing. You should do the B. And then they come into a board meeting, they're like, guys, I think we should raise a B. So then, the, you know, they're like, hey, you should raise a B. Um, and some different firm, well, of which they're all buddies, do the B. Mark it up, four or five X. Now what's happened? Fund A, their returns look genius. Now it's all on paper, but it looks amazing, right? Fund B comes into the board meeting now. Hey, how fast are you growing? Mm, you got to grow faster. Okay, now 40 cents of every dollar there goes into Facebook and Google and Amazon, right? And you're buying even more unprofitable growth. It's not even clear that those LTVs and those CACs make any sense. Doesn't matter. You've been told to grow. So you're growing. You're doing your job. Did your product market fit actually change in that moment? Probably not. But you continue to pump money into those things. And then the Series B investor says, hmm, we should raise a Series C. We're running out of money. Well, of course you are, because 40 cents of every dollar just went back into the hands of Facebook, Google, and Amazon. They introduce it to another buddy. That buddy is like, yeah, this looks great. Boom, fire the money in. Now A has an even better markup. B has a markup. C has a basis and is like, hey, how fast are you growing? Maybe you should grow faster, OK? Now, meanwhile, somewhere between the B and the C round, the guy who runs Fund A is like, I should raise a second fund. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> and goes to a bunch of investors and says, look at my IRR. They're amazing. Isn't this amazing? And the investor's like, yeah, this is amazing. Here, here's more money. And then now he or she goes and finds another batch and starts the process again. And then somewhere between the C and the D, the B guys are like, I, I'm pretty good at this. This is, I, this is easier than I thought. I should raise a second fund. Maybe I'll make it a slightly bigger fund. I should be doing bigger checks. Raises a B, right? Raises fund two. Finds fund A's batch of second companies and says, hey, let's work together again. We are good at this together. On and on down the line. This is what's happening now. So... When you wake up every day and you read a newsletter and you notice 
that umpteen companies are getting funded for every single idea, and then that the quantum of dollars are going up, and that all of a sudden you're reading about investors you've never, ever heard of. That is what something like this looks like played out in real life. So you have the cream of the crop, who will still do a good job, but who now have to raise larger and larger funds. They own less and less of the companies. The returns are not as good. And then you have everybody else who's chasing, 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 and playing this sort of hot potato game, hoping to raise a fund. And then a second fund, and then a third fund. And then the biggest thing happens, which is you all be, this, that whole industry that services you guys, theoretically services you guys, are no longer about your success because your success is about their carry and they couldn't give a fuck. They care about fees, right? And it's not very difficult to get out a Google spreadsheet and figure out at how many dollars, right? Does 2% of those dollars divided by the five or six partners at that firm are greater than their share of profits for you at some number of exits? And then you wonder why they're more concerned about how much money you're spending on Facebook, Google, and Amazon. You so if somebody builds up five or six of these $500 million funds, they get to two, three, four much billion. Much less, much less, Jason. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you even have 500 million under management and you're collecting 2% a year, it's 10 million bucks. You know, it's three, and let's just say there's four or five partners. You're making a million dollars a year over 10 years. Think of how much you've made. 10 million. And think of how much the fund has to be. I mean, you're, you, you look stupid, but you are not stupid. Uh, but think of how much money the fund would have to be, you know, net of expenses, net of all of this stuff for you to pay back. It's super complicated math. Yeah. And so my point is, the incentives in this industry are the most out of whack they've ever been. Mm. It's a bit of a charade. So my point is, I looked at our portfolio. We have some incredible businesses we have things that are really meaningful in the world. We have both. And I'm like, it's time to take my tips off the table. Sorry, ciao. Mm. You know? So, and I would rather sit there and wait with an enormous balance sheet of capital, find the really, really good companies that need the money, and then also wait for some of this air to get out of the balloon. Find a point where like the charade gets exposed. And for me, I will not be a part of this charade anymore. Mm. I don't know, and I think the charade is dangerous. And it's particularly dangerous to these companies. It's very, very dangerous to you as founders. Because again, at some point, the whole grow, grow, grow at all costs runs out of juice. You can no longer acquire at a certain point profitably in Google, Facebook, and Amazon, right? Your LTVs will get out of whack, right? Your um, gross margin positivity, all of a sudden, gross margin negativity. I mean, forget about net profitability. These are fundamentally broken business concepts. They don't work. They only work if the money never stops. But the money never stops until as much time as people can raise new funds. And that's predicated on people marking up old deals. You see how this whole thing, like at no point is there anything that comes back to you, the entrepreneur, that says, what's your true core product market fit and is it working? It's not part of the conversation. That so is extremely dangerous. So it's, I can't prognosticate and pick a time that's not the point. But I think the point is that there has to be much more sobriety in terms of how companies grow. And, you know, like I've now thought to myself, my gosh, I would love to grow and find a business that can be there growing 20 to 25% a year for the next 15 years. That violates all the mechanics and all the gymnastics within a venture fund. It's like grow at 400 because we know 400 eventually decays to 12% a year. But they don't care by the time you're growing at 12% a year because by the time 400 became 200, became 100, became 50, they've raised two more funds, they've marked up the rest of their deals, they've made their fees, ciao. Wherever you are, you wanna be, whether you're obvious or non-obvious, you wanna be in that capital light column. Think of where venture excels. Venture excels in obvious meets capital heavy. Look at scooters. It's not to, it's not to make fun. Scooters is an exceptionally obvious business model, right? Well, you'd say, well, we had planes on charter, 
25 years ago through NetJets, we eventually had smaller planes on charter, then we had buses on charter, then we had limousines on charter, then we had cars on charter, then we had cheaper cars on charter, then we were pooling cars, then we had bicycles. I mean, you literally did not have to be as smart as you to take that trail of breadcrumbs and say, well, what's the quantum of transport that's smaller than a bicycle but greater than your feet? Roller, I don't know, roller, roller blades? Roller blades? Just littered all over uh, San Francisco. Just right. roller blades everywhere. Roller blades. Put your feet in, see what happens. Yeah. Could be anything in there. Could be anything in there. Needles. Hypodermic needles, Rats. feces. Anything, human, dog. Human, yeah. You know, by the way, when you become mayor and fix this town, I'm gonna move back here. That's my commitment to you. I like it. MayorJason.com approves. Um, um, so, so basically, like, but think about that, right? But now think about how much money has gone into that category. Billions. And in, and, no, and, hundreds of millions. And the, the delta of time that those companies have existed, 18 months, 24 months. But again, obvious capital heavy. Why? Because it pays off the charade. Get it in there, fire it in, buy some ads, blah, 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 grow so fast, get somebody else, put some more money in, fire some ads, buy some growth, blah, blah, blah. Jesus Christ, I mean, like, is that, is that how great businesses get built? In my opinion, probably not. Then you have people like Elon, and he's like, well, I'm going to do the other thing, which is like capital-heavy, non-obvious. And basically, unless you're as smart as he is, it's the dumbest thing to do. Rocket ships. Rocket ships, cars. cars Electric right? cars. Power then, walls. Then, then I would say, there's the rest of us. And I would say, non-obvious or obvious, you're not going to know a priori. But capital heavy, capital light, you can control. And I love this idea of things. Like, for, you know, it takes $2 billion to launch a product. And, you know, that $2 billion, because of how much it costs, you need like 20,000 customers. And we go off and we find those 20,000 customers for $2,000. And we're like, $2 billion is spent to acquire these people? What's going, what? And so, but instead what we said was, let's just seed it with 50K. Ah, oh, it's kind of working. Let's put in another 200K. Ah, oh, it's kind of working. My point is, there's a level of discipline I've arrived at now in terms of the things that I think should be, how, they, how I like companies to be built. Because otherwise you're always going to be getting whipsawed by the fund dynamics, by what LPs are demanding of the GPs, by what GPs have issues with with respect to compensation. And so there's a whole bunch of vagaries that have nothing to do with you. Well, you know, I'm building a house in Atherton. I leased a fancy car. Um, yeah, I'll do your deal. Um, because I think it's growing fast enough where somebody else will mark up my deal. That'll allow me to raise a new fund, which will allow me to get the 2%, which will allow me to increase my compensation, which will pay for my car. I'm sorry, guys, but like, if you think that that's not what's happening, you're lying to yourself. You are lying to yourself. 